Many are familiar with the Vineyard Church movement. Today's guest had the opportunity to travel and minister with the founder of Vineyard, the late John Wimber. Glenn Schroeder is the regional coordinator for Vineyard Missions USA in Mexico and Central America. Glenn also pastors Cascade Vineyard Church in Portland, Oregon. He's also the author of Never Trust a Leader Without a Limp, the wit and wisdom of John Wimber, founder of the Vineyard Church movement. Welcome to BCN, Glenn. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. And aloha. I guess you're joining us from Hawaii, right? That is correct. We're here to celebrate our anniversary. I'm on vacation in Hawaii today. Oh, that's beautiful. Never trust a leader without a limp. I got to love the title of the book. That's, that's, that's hilarious. How did you come up with that? I didn't come up with that. Actually, John did. Every chapter in the book is based on these little sayings that John had that were ways of communicating either theological or sort of philosophy of ministry truth. And never trust a leader without a limp was one of those. It was something he said to indicate that uh, leadership is a hard road. And sometimes those hard knocks really shape us and form us and make us into the people we become in the Lord. So what was it like really traveling with John Wimber, the founder of the Vineyard Church? Well, it, it, it's interesting because we were very young at the time. Uh, and, and it was kind of at that time, it seemed normal. We were just doing what we thought we were supposed to be doing. And uh, he, he had really uh, a very strong emphasis on releasing ministry and letting other people do ministry. So there was a team of us that went along with him on a number of different trips. And uh, it was really fun. Years later, looking back, I was talking to one of my friends that was on some of those trips. And he made the statement, I wish we'd have paid more attention. Uh, because at the time, it seemed very normal. We just felt like we were doing what God had called us and led us to do. Glenn, there's a lot of talk lately about whether God uses flawed leaders to accomplish his purpose and will. What's your take on that issue? Uh, I think we're all flawed leaders. And I think that uh, we have a couple of options. One is to allow those things to disqualify us and take us out of the game, or to allow those things to strengthen us and, and make us stronger and better leaders. Now, recent studies show that Christians are not sharing their faith enough and that the number of unchurched people is actually growing. What do you make of these kinds of trends? It's, it's an interesting trend. Uh, you know, I was talking to somebody recently about not only that trend in general, but that trend specifically among young people today, the millennial generation. We found that uh, in our church in specific and in the Vineyard Movement as a whole, that uh, it's very attractive to young people if we have a very authentic style of faith that's not uh, critical, judgmental, but embracing, welcoming, and like I said, authentic. Now, can you share the story of how John Wimber, the leader of the Vineyard Movement, came to know Christ? I, I can. I can. J John, John was uh, a musician, a professional musician, who worked with a, a band called the Paramours, who later became the Righteous Brothers. And he was... Uh, his wife and a group of people that friends of his in Yorba Linda, California, were attending a small Bible study after their church service. And John was touring and traveling at the time, not part of the group. And uh, he showed up at the group one night. And then there's an, uh, a gentleman there named Gunnar Payne, who was an oil field worker, completely different reality, different background than John. And just began to share his faith very, uh, again, authentically. And, uh, and so John came to Christ. Now, John Wimber's book, Power Evangelism, changed the way American evangelicals pray, gather, and really reach out. Why do you think it was so influential? Uh, I think it was influential because it incorporated everybody into the game. It, it, an evangelist was no longer a person on a stage. Uh, it was no longer a big name, God's man of the hour person. It was every believer in every pew in every church in America. You know, Glenn, I'm told that every vineyard church has an ashtray out front of the building. Are there still that many smokers in the world? What's going on there? You know, I, I've heard that, but I've not seen that. I think some may. We do not. Uh, uh, I don't know how many smokers there are. I, I think, if anything, it would be an indication that you're welcome here regardless. Now, you chatted a bit earlier about uh, John's musical influences. You know, he's a musician. To what extent did Wimber's background in the music industry influence the way Christian worship music has changed? Uh, I think it was significant because uh, today, worship music is, uh, I mean, contemporary, what we know of uh, as contemporary worship is very popular. In the 70s, the late 70s, early 80s, when Vineyard was just beginning, uh, there wasn't much like it out there. And it was really revolutionary to do uh, worship in the style of contemporary music that, that Vineyard was doing at that time. So 80s would be considered contemporary. The reason I'm asking that is my senior producer always gives me a rough time that even my worship music's from the 80s. 
So it's still cool. Is it still okay? It was contemporary then. If we play 80 today, we're outdated. <laughs> now, you write about some of the so-called Wimberisms. What are they exactly? Wimberisms, again, were these little statements that, that John would use to describe either theological truth or philosophy of ministry, things like the meats in the street. And that, that, was, uh, that came from a conversation he had. A woman came up to him following a service and said, hey, when are we going to get into the meat of the word? And John said, well, the meat's in the street, meaning that the meat of the word is when you do the word. And so there, there, were, there are any number of sayings, and I've uh, taken the time to write as many as I could remember down in my book and write a little bit about each one. Glenn, tell me more about the term, everyone gets to play. Oh, absolutely. That's one of my favorites. Uh, everyone gets to play was, again, a philosophical statement that the ministry of the kingdom of God is not restricted to professionals. It's not res restricted to pastors or elders. It's really a statement that says that every single believer has a, a valid contribution to make to the kingdom of God, and everyone can be involved in ministry. Why do you say the pastoral ministry is not very easy, especially today? <laughs> uh, I think it's a lot of fun, but it's a challenge because, again, what you said earlier there, there's a lot of presupposition of people outside the church about what the church thinks about them. And so you have to push past some of those things and make people realize that God is a loving God and we are loving people. We, we want to welcome them in and not just be critical and judgmental of them. Uh, I think when you can get past some of those barriers that have been erected uh, over time, we really come to a place where we realize, hey, uh, th this is, this is a, a, a valid thing to do. So, Glenn, what did John Wimber say to you when you once opened up about your own personal struggles? Uh, so, so, so that's a great story. Uh, be, before I was on staff with John, I was a gardener in and around Orange County. John was one of my clients. And I showed up at his house one day to do the lawn. Uh, he came out to talk to me, and I was going through a tough time. I was probably about uh, 21 or 22 years old at the time. And, uh, you know, he said, how you doing? And I, I kind of cried the blues a little, said, hey, John, I'm having kind of a hard day, a hard week, whatever. And he said, well, you're doing the right thing. And I said, I am? He said, yeah, you're doing the right thing. He goes, when you feel like that, what you want to do is stay in bed and pull the curtains over your head and just hide all day. But what you need to do is get up, get out, put your shoes and socks on, go to work, and pray. Pray until that lifts off of you. And I tell you, it changed everything for me. And I did exactly what he said. I was mowing the lawn and praying at the same time. By the end of the day, I, I think things have changed significantly. That's great. Now, you're right about the rabbinic model of discipleship. What does that mean? That means that, that uh, it's, it's, it's really a show-and-tell kind of model. John really believed that uh, discipleship was transferred through life. And so it's sort of like he would invite somebody to come along with him. Uh, and, and, and watch him do ministry. And then he would invite them into the process and they would minister with him. And then he would say, okay, now you do it. And then he would watch. And so it was really just a transference of authority, a transference of ministry through a, a sort of a show and tell or rabbinic model. And, and, and really John trained, I, I, I don't know, hundreds of people to, to do ministry in, in, in that way. You say, Glenn, being in a grace-filled community was the way in and the way on. How so? Uh, yeah, so again, I think sometimes there's this idea that, uh, especially today, okay, we talked about the current situation in Church of America today. I have to get my life together, I have to get things uh, straight, and then I can go to church, then I can come to God. John's idea was, no, just come as you are, come on in, and, and let's work on those things together. And so that was sort of the way in is the way on. And, and we were ex accepted and received with grace, and then we continued on in that same path. And, and then I think ultimately use that to, to welcome others in along the way. Hey, Glenn, a lot of times your pastors say, just come as you are. Flip-flops, jeans, ripped jeans, whatever, doesn't really matter. But then there are other, other people, you know, more traditionalists that say, no, you should really put on your Sunday best and show respect to God when you go to church. What are your thoughts? Hey, I, I understand that completely. So come as you are was a statement that John used uh, that many people think describes just come as you are in terms of your dress. But it really was a deeper statement of come as you are in regards to the condition of your heart. Where, where are you at in life? And come to the Lord that way and, and let him work together on where that goes from here. As far as clothing, uh, vineyard churches today tend to be very casual. Uh, and and it's, it's not necessary for us to put on our best. I think it, in our mind, in our heart, it's really putting your best in your heart. What, what, what's in here? 
putting that forward more than so, what, what's on the outside. Okay, let's talk more, Glenn, about the core DNA that is part of the vineyard movement. Well, there's, that's a big question. Uh, you know, I, I think there, there are a number of issues. Really, my book is about the DNA of the vineyard. Every, every chapter is a little bit about who we are as a people and what defines us. I've, I've told our congregation and those I get a chance to talk to, we're not the best church in town, we're not the only church in town, but this is who we are. And so I think part of our DNA is that authenticity, uh, that ability to come where we are today and to move forward together with the Lord. Uh, and and it's, it's a humility that allows us to enter into a place of worship that, in my mind, is very, very genuine and very real. Why do you think so many young people today find a home in vineyard churches? Uh, well, for one thing, uh, everything I just said, plus the fact that we make an opportunity for them to, to make a, a valid and vital contribution. You don't have to uh, get older to, to be involved in a vineyard church. Uh, I've told people my, my church today, my associate pastor is 27 years old. Uh, there's only one person on my worship team over the age of 30, and one of our worship leaders is 18. And so we make a place for them. And, and they know that th their contribution counts. And so and that was really something that came from John. I was 19 when I started uh, attending the vineyard, and my wife was uh, a little bit younger than me. And uh, we, we really found that we, we were active and involved and engaged from the very beginning, regardless of how old we were. Glenn, how can we make church more relevant in today's society? That's a great question. Uh, I think one is opening the door to... Uh, to younger people, I, I I think speaking a language that they that they can understand, and being willing to embrace people where they are, and with a loving and an acceptance and a welcoming that's not uh, critical or judgmental, uh, I think there, there's nothing more relevant than the church in my mind to where we are as a world today. There's so much division, so 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 much isolation, and church is community. It's not division. It's it's connection. And I think those things, speaking those things loud and clear, will draw people's hearts into, you know, a relationship with the Lord. And our young people are the leaders of tomorrow, so love them where they're at, I guess, right? They're, I think they're the leaders today. What do you hope readers will really take away from reading your book? Uh, you know, I, I, I really hope that they take away an understanding that uh, the venue that John in specific, and, and really the kingdom of God is a place where uh, everybody really does get to play uh, and where everybody can make a contribution and where, where humility and authenticity are greater values than uh, maybe some of the other values that they, they've had put forth in other contexts. Glenn Schroeder, author of Never Trust a Leader Without a Limp, The Wit and Wisdom of John Wimber, founder of the Vineyard Church Movement. Thanks a lot for joining me today from Maui, Hawaii. Thank you so much for having me on. Aloha. And behalf of all of us here at BCN, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless. Thanks so much for watching.